Yeah, I mean, the liberal press has had their, had their, that's why the conservative press hasn't touched it because they know it's a bullshit story. Um, but Clayton, you're, really you're literally in Portugal, moment, though. I'll let you. Like you, you see how that looks. You're you're actually in Portugal. So I mean, I I, I think <laughs> claiming it's bullshit when you're you've literally left America. I that doesn't really make sense, does it? I don't know how this is any of your business. To be honest with you, I really don't know how you've made my business your business. Where I live with my family, where I choose to live, living in. I, how is this any of your business? You also don't know the statistics, which I'll share with you now, that only 7%, 7% in our Indianapolis market were harmed and uh, in this situation. I don't, uh, I don't agree with that math based on my sources. Well. Because, Eric, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you what I got. I'll show you my hand. I'm telling you right now. Okay. We talk, you, saw, so you told me. At the highest level. That number is, is accurate, and those numbers have been through with a fine tooth comb by authorities in a much higher position than you. You told me so, that you sold 500 properties down there, correct? Right? You sold 500 properties down there? Yeah? No? We didn't. Last time I talked to you, you said you sold 500 properties down there. Sell, we, we didn't sell a single property. Okay, you... When I, you received uh, you received a commission of six thousand dollars for marketing five hundred properties down there. Yeah, that's what we talked about last time. Me and you, I took notes. So you agree with me on that, right? Because that's I got that information from you. Are you now not agreeing with that information? I'm not. I'm not sure if that number is accurate. All right, because it no, was I'm not sure if that it was 500 is. last time when I talked to you. We spoke that it was 500 properties. And yeah. by the way, when we spoke, we spoke last and we spoke last time off the record, so that we spoke none of that. What I spoke to you last time is off the record. 500 properties, six thousand dollars. That was I think it was two million dollars. By the way, I have those text messages off the record. Sure. So yeah. Any of that is. Off the and we talked about how you made two million dollars, and then we talked about how you know if you run the math on that, based on the amount of money Whalen made versus the amount of money you made, you made two million and ruined your entire reputation, and you lot you left your cozy job on TV, and he made roughly twenty nine and a half million. That shit's in the that shit right there is pro Clayton. It's in the video, but what I'm trying to get to uh, right now, what I'm trying to say right now. Uh, in regards to the 7% statistic you're giving me, if uh, we are in agreement that it was 500 properties, I have a property manager in Indianapolis. Uh, I'm sure you know him, Todd Burton. He is on the record telling me that uh, 100 investors reached out to him and he ended up working on 80 properties. Uh, 80. So. 80, I don't have a calculator in front of me, but... You realize that that has... No, and, and you realize, and I hope this is in your piece, because you realize the top burden angle on this, right? I would imagine it's to... to I would, it's pretty obvious what his angle is, yes. Okay. Do you realize that he also had reached out to me to work with me and asked me to leave for that, like... He tried to, he tried to get our business happen to share those emails with you but he and his partner maybe it was Dave or Doug I forget yeah I know I know his partner reached out to want to work with okay and that those properties are not all Morris invest properties at all okay well and I'm not going I'm not arguing managers in that town have you talked to have you talked to the other property managers well like hold on house I am not the arguing and Josh Wetzel can tell you well, what I'm telling you right now, Clayton, is I'm not arguing that what you're telling me that all 80 of those are... I'm not arguing with you that what you're saying is incorrect, but I, I am saying that he is on the record, and he on the record claimed that 80 from Morris Invest specifically, he his company specifically worked on 80 properties from your supply chain. That is, he is on the record saying that, and that will be in the piece. I'm not arguing with you... You're telling me right now not all of them are yours. 
I'm not accusing you of making that up. I'm just telling you he's on the record saying that 80 of them were. And that I will put that in the piece. We, as a property management company, ended up effectively taking nearly 80 of these properties through this Morris Ocean Point debacle and dealing with the fallout uh, associated with that and the owners. I've also talked to probably close to 100 different owners uh, in addition to the ones that we manage for and helped a few of them get their properties either purchased back or just advise them uh, as to you know what I would suggest they do with the situation. Okay, so you've had over 100 investors reach out to you and you have actually done work for 80 of them. Could you kind of walk me through, like, number one, how are these people finding you? Like 80 or, you know, 100, actually, over 100. That's a lot of people. So how are they all getting together and finding you guys? Uh, they primarily found this, um, it was about two and a half years before this thing really hit that we had an investor from California contact us had two properties, had no idea what was going on with their properties. The tenants hadn't collected rent in over a year. Uh, we ended up dealing with, with those properties and those properties ended up being Ocean Point properties. Through that, I filed a, an attorney general's complaint. Uh, December of uh, 18, it came back um, and that's posted on Bigger Pockets. I started getting active in Bigger Pockets because of that and some of the chatter that was on there about the situation and as more and more people came to uh, understand or contribute what was going on there, I became more involved and because of my participation, I became one of the primary people that, that people reached out to. Okay, so we had a little bit of investors coming to you, then you started doing this work, so then you went to the public, you went to the forums, you posted that attorney general complaint that you filed Correct. on bigger pockets. Uh, everyone, if you click the show notes below, uh, we are going to provide you with a link to Todd's attorney general complaint. If you'd like to go over and read it all, that's going to be in those show notes below. So now you're online, you've got the complaint, and now investors are just swarming to you, I assume. It's kind of like an avalanche. Yes, and, and I would like to also clarify that not only is that the complaint, it was the, it was the response from the attorney general's office to the complaint where they actually revoked uh, Burt Whalen's real estate license. Holton Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to HoltonWise.com today. Burt Whalen is the, the primary or the owner of Ocean Point Investments, the company that was working here locally with Morris Invest to source the properties and supposedly rehab them, do property management, place tenants. But he doesn't have a license currently. So in fact, it was interesting because I was communicating through their Facebook page and asked if they had a real estate license at that point in time. And I got a response from them saying, no, we don't have a real estate license. We're a professional management company, but in the state of Indiana, you're required to have an Indiana licensed real estate broker to manage for third party companies. Okay. Okay. So guys, we have, you know, Burt Whalen running Ocean Point. He's running the on the ground infrastructure in Indy for Morris Invest. And Todd, at this point, you know, you're public with all this information. Investors are swarming to you. Can you walk me through like what a typical investor situation is like when they call you up like, hey, Todd, what's up? I bought these properties from Morris Invest. I need help. Where are they? Like, what do they need help with? What is happening? Yeah, um, most of them, I kind of were, were initially dumbfounded. I think all of them felt like they were alone in the situation. And because of the way things transpired in a, in a email that went out that was carbon copied instead of carbon instead of line carbon copied uh, through the Ocean Point and their um, AHS and urban construction and their other uh, intuitions. Uh, everybody was copied on that and I think everybody found out that hey you know I'm not alone this is a bigger deal it's not a one-off situation. So people would contact me and they say look I don't know what to do I'm in this situation I, I get no communications 
I see that you have a lot of experience in this area, you do property management. First and foremost, their question was, can you help me manage my property? Um, at which point we would, we would tell them, look, we have to take a look at the situation. Here's what we found so far. Typically these are highly distressed properties that have nothing done to them. Uh, any rehabs paid for typically weren't done or, or very little of which was done. So we went and what we would do is we would evaluate each property or the properties for the owners on a case by case basis and then try and give them a, some instruction on what we're seeing and what their options were. And in the majority of cases, their best option was effectively just to cut the losses. All right, so you, you say that, you know, because, right, there's, there's turnkey real estate, uh, which is what's being pitched. But then, of course, you know, a lot of money can be made in real estate when you buy an asset that's totally distressed. You put the money into it yourself, yes. you know, the Burr right. method, so to speak. Uh, so when you say that a lot of these properties were not renovated or very little of the renovation was done, was that sold to these investors uh, with them? knowing full well they were buying a distressed asset or were they told that the asset was already renovated or were they buying a distressed asset and paying for a renovation up front, but then nobody was renovating it? What exactly went yeah, from, from what I, Yeah, from what I was seeing, if, if you look at the Morris Invest videos, he was selling complete renovated turnkey properties, or at least that's what he was presenting. But then what they were selling was properties that were not renovated supposedly promising or building the renovation cost into the purchase price. But from what I've seen, there was no actual contractual obligation or anything in writing, no quotes, no bids, no anything to associate with those rehabs that were being uh, purchased or along with the property. Uh, so while they thought they were buying a rehab property, what they were really getting was a property that wasn't rehabbed with a property uh, and a promise to do a rehab, but no contractual obligation or anything associated with that at that point. And, uh, and that's why I think where they really got the wolf on their eyes. Now, Todd, I don't, you know, I'm in Cleveland. It's a very similar market to where you guys are down there. Uh, but I don't know everything about your market. I don't know the exact prices. Can you like, tell like, a typical single family home, like a three bed, one bath, probably like 1200 square foot, I would assume like a you know, C-class asset. What is that going to rent for? How much is it going to be worth when it's renovated? And like, how much are they worth when they're totally beat to shit? Yeah. Um, those, what I would call a, a C-class property based like on what you're describing is probably going to be anywhere from about, uh, Seventy to ninety thousand dollars in a decent C class, lower B class. Um, usually, you know, if it, if it's highly distressed, you know, you might put twenty thousand dollars into it. Uh, but what I was seeing here on the ground was that these properties were being advertised as C class, but they were really typically what I would call a D class property valuations after rehab might be fifty to sixty thousand dollars and that's the primary reason why we were advising the majority of people just to sell their properties because regardless of what they did to them they were still going to be in these d-class neighborhoods and, and would never really be a high quality asset for them okay so it's kind of like twofold so they were being told that they were buying an asset that should have a renovated market value of seventy to ninety thousand in fact, they were one asset class lower, which is a renovated value of fifty to sixty thousand, and they were paying, I assume, fifty to sixty thousand. What are distressed assets in that D class neighborhood like really going for on the ground? Like, can you buy those for like fifty, yeah. twenty k? Yeah, I, I've seen quite a few of the uh, the uh, sales disclosures and the tax reports and things like that from and parcel cards from the city. And most of these properties were being purchased for anywhere from about six to $20,000. It was pretty typical of what uh, Ocean Point would purchase them for. Okay, six to 20K. Now, obviously Ocean Point is a management company. It's a large management company. 
Uh, do they have like an extreme inline uh, to get these properties? Or is that essentially like what beat, beat to hell houses are selling for in those neighborhoods on the open market out there? Uh, that's what they're selling for on the open market. But the majority of the homes, at least the uh, vast majority that I've seen, came through the property tax sale. Here okay. in Indianapolis, meaning that they were so distressed that the people who owned them didn't even want to pay the property taxes on them. That's how, how bad they were. Okay, so these guys are picking these up, 6 to 20K, uh, and they're telling investors, hey, we need to do a renovation or it's already renovated, one or the other, but then they're really still just getting the distressed asset. They're not putting it on paper in contract. So it's like me on the phone, yeah, Todd, I got this house, it's rent ready, it's good to go, and then I sell it to you. You don't do an inspection. I don't disclose any of the issues. And then post-close, you come to the realization that your house wasn't actually rent ready. That's what's happening? Correct. And then in a lot of cases, a lot of the investors had been collecting rents on properties that were either not rented or were under-rented. Leases for $400 where the owners were collecting $600 a month or there was nobody in them, which to me was, looks like an inducement to try and make people believe their asset is performing and to buy more of these properties. <clears throat> wow. So you're telling me that you have personally dealt with investors who purchased an asset, were told it was rented, and were actually receiving their monthly rental checks from the Ocean Point Morris Invest companies but in fact, the home was never renovated and there never was a tenant in place. That's what you're saying? Absolutely. So yes, 100%. So essentially, uh, that, you know, by all means appears to be a Ponzi scheme because if the money isn't coming from the rent, the only logical place that that money could possibly be coming from would be new investors purchasing new properties for this inflated price point uh, of basically 70 to 90 K for an unrenovated property in a lower asset class, which really has a value of roughly 20 K. That's what you're That's telling correct. Me. Holy yes, sir. moly. That is rough. So when an investor, how, how did they find out that the rents were fake? Was that when they turned things over to you or like, how did like they come to the, like if they're getting paid, how did the ball drop and they figured out that they're, they were involved in essentially a Ponzi? Yeah. Some, some of that, uh, yeah. Some of that was their own personal experiences. Uh, some of that was also that if, if you read or speak to a lot of the investors, you'll see that I believe it was about April when every single one of them or the vast majority of them got some kind of notice saying that uh, their tenant had moved out and they were no longer able to collect rent and they had to do unit turns. But there were literally, you know, tens if not hundreds of these same letters sent at the exact same time. Wow. Um, so with these uh, 80 investors that ended up, uh, you know, trying to get you to help them pick up the pieces. What what happened with a lot of them? Did you sell a lot of the properties? Were you able to take some of them over? Like what, what yes. happened? Were they able to do anything to mitigate their losses or what do we have going on right now? It was a combination of all those things. Some guys were able to put them back together and we've got a few of them that are cash flowing and working. Uh, some guys put money into them and then decided just to go ahead and sell them or put enough into them to clean them up to make make them presentable and at least accessible to other agents and other buyers. And then some guys just walked away. In one case, I know a guy who bought a house for 76 or 77,000. And when we sold it, he ended up uh, netting $17,000. He lost about $60,000. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. tough. Um, yeah. So like, but let, let me tell you something else, James. Um, okay. In addition to all these distressed houses, they were building what they called new construction houses as well. And they were buying vacant city lots for $450 a piece, 450 to 500. And they were selling them for $68,500 with nothing more than a promise to build a home. No contract, nothing else other than a promise. They were closing and they were closing, getting paid $68,500. And there was no structure at all on the property. No contract to build it, nothing. And, and at this moment, as we record this interview right now, 
have any of those houses been built? Some of them have been built. I don't know the number of homes that have been built. I did have the subcontractor for the builder contacted me a couple of weeks ago and was telling me some things about the situation, about them not getting paid, about them stopping construction on, on the properties. It's my understanding that the builder may be putting liens on those properties for monies he owed. I don't know that for sure, but I've heard that secondhand. Um, but I, I know personally of one lady that we manage for that has two of these lots and one of them is nothing more than still a vacant lot and the other has a trench built uh, for the foundation or done for the foundation, but uh, this has been over a year ago that she closed on these. And th these are vacant lots that she paid 68500 for with a real market, market value of $450. We are one year removed from her closing and there is no home and there is no contractor who is out there doing this work for her. Uh, from what I'm seeing out there right now, it appears that Clayton Morris and Morris Invest and Burt Whalen and Ocean Point are now blaming each other for miscommunications. And it just goes back to that, you know, things weren't in writing. It's a lot of he said, she said, and these guys are placing the blame back and forth. Uh, you are correct. They are blaming each other. There's been multiple occasions where the Morrises have said that they've gone to the attorney generals and they're trying to sue Burt Whalen and they're trying to go after him legally. I haven't seen anything. Bert's been pretty closed mouth about this, which is probably in his best interest at this point. Uh, but yeah, that, that is uh, correct, that they are uh, effectively blaming each other and, and pointing the finger at each other at this point in time. Uh, one thing I would add to what you were saying about the inspections is, if you look at a lot of the communications and or talk to the owners like I have, they were all giving, being given a very hard sales pitch and being told things like inspections take too much time, we sell these, we move too quickly on them. And I would say to anybody out there considering investment real estate, if you hear anything like that, that's it, stop at that point. If they don't allow inspections, you have no need to move forward. At the end of the day, if you get a feeling that it's not right, it probably isn't. And I think most of these people knew it wasn't but I think they got caught in, in the hype and the pressure and the, the goodwill of, of somebody that they trusted because that person had been a trustworthy television personality. And I think that's the play that really got a lot of these people into it. When I had filed my attorney general's complaint, I got the response from them where they revoked his license and I posted that on the Bigger Pockets forum and then within uh, like the next day uh, my phone rang at about 10 o'clock on a Friday night and I did not answer it. I got up the next morning and I had a message and uh, the, the message was from Burt Whalen and we know this because we have a bondage phone system that captures phone numbers and we were able to see that the phone was owned by Sandra Whalen, obviously uh, related to him. And uh, this was the message. Keep stopping lies, you stupid motherfucker. And I'm going to be honest with you like you've never fucking seen before. You're a piece of shit loser. And I'm going to fucking kill you. Wow. Uh, that, was, uh, that was quite the voicemail. Um, special thanks to Todd for coming on. And, and giving us all some insight into things he has physically seen on the ground. Todd has actually personally worked with investors who have been harmed down there in Indianapolis investing in these rental properties. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.